Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to take a look at the LDG Z817 tuner, made it up to the Yaesu FT818, the doomsday radio. This, all of my radios are my favorite radios. This one, this one is my favorite radio. Shh, don't tell all the rest of the radios. We're gonna take this over on the bench, we're gonna take it apart. I am going to also play around with a new electronic screwdriver that my friends over at Kaiweet sent in for a review. And then we are going to do some experimentation. I have been using this Kaiweet's S20, ooh, my hand was all dusty. This Kaiweet's S20 screwdriver set for quite a while now. And my friends over at Kaiweet's asked me if I'd like to look at their electronic version. I'm like, yeah, electronic screwdriver? This should make my life a lot easier on the channel, but we will see. So owner's manual. I don't really know why we need an owner's manual for a screwdriver set. I mean, if you're the kind of, if you're the kind of person that uses screwdrivers, you're the kind of person that does not, does not use owner's manuals. This is in every language except for English. Nope, there it is. 17 pieces. There's more than 17 pieces in here. I guess it's 17 pieces in addition to all the screwdriver bits. Yeah, there's a bunch of them over there. All right. So yeah, we've we got instructions. Who cares about instructions? I guess they get yelled at if they don't include instructions. So nice little nice little bag. I kind of like the small case of the other one. Just I, actually, I've been leaving this thing sit on my desk here. Um, but the the small bag, the, the parts. See where that part goes. There's a couple of loose parts in here. That probably goes there. That definitely goes there. There's some stuff in there. Okay, there's a little magnetic mat there for your screws. That's not bad. So where does this piece here go? Nothing hiding in there. All right, let's fold these things here back over. All right, this is quite the assortment of screwdriver bits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 120 screwdriver bits is actually quite a lot of screwdriver bits. We have a USB A to C charging cable. We have a anti-static brush, some guitar picks. This thing here is pretty neat. This is a demagnetizer or a magnetizer. So you can add or remove magnetism to your bits, which was actually what this little section here was for inside of this kit. Okay, so this is probably required to go in here. Little rubber stopper on the top there. I mean, you could put the bits in directly. Or you could use the, the bit extender. That's kind of awkward. And for, for real added extra fun, you can use the angled bit extender plus the regular bit extender and extend all over the place. Flashlight. Fairly quiet. I'm judging the size of this and I'm thinking it's probably got two 18650s in it. I'm gonna stick this in with the charging cable because I don't have any other place really to put it. And because this is the ham radio channel, we have the LDG Z817 auto tuner. We're gonna take this apart and see what is inside of it. So these are regular number two Phillips, it looks like. I'm gonna grab a, a number two Phillips bit. And we have Phillips Torx from T1 through T20. We've got security Torx T5 through T25. We've got posit drive, triple aught through two, tri wings 0.6 through three, standard one through four. We got a lot of standard stars, 0 0.8 through 2.0. We've got tiny little hex 0 0.7 through six, triangle two, 2.3, 2.7, three. These guys here, these are like, you'd find these in the school system for, you know, turning on lights or whatnot. They're another kind of security bit. I don't know the name of these, 2.3, 2.6, and eight. That's kind of a very large, oh, 2.3, 2.6, 2.9, no, eight squares. And these are just called SIM, which is probably the same thing as this guy over here, but they're just little pokey jobs. These are called mids. Those are interesting. And then we have, huh, this one is curved. This one's a, a flat, I guess FS for flat square and PB for parabolic. But this one here is 
kind of curved, so you could use it to pry stuff up. That's not bad. And then we've got conical points. This is a 0 0.1 and a 0 0.3, and they just get bigger. And then these are for nuts, 2.5 through 4.5, and then internal Phillips, and then the adapter from one to the other. Not bad. All right, let's get this out of the way. And let's start working on this tuner that I promised you. So which way? I'm going to assume that the top button is take it out and the bottom button is push it in. So we're going to stick that. Jeez. Let me get a different Phillips head. Let's go with the number one. See if the number one fits any better. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay. So let's unscrew it, loosen it first, and then use the electric to unscrew. That seems like a better, a better part of wisdom. These are screwing into plastic, so they do have the ability to bite pretty hard. That worked out really well. All right, and there is the top off of the tuner. Internally, we have four double A batteries for powering this thing up. And those are on a self adhesive pad. Underneath of that, you have your toroids. These, the windings on these toroids are on the bottom. And then you have a bunch of relays to switch between. And then inside here, there's actually, wow. I don't know if you can see all that in there. Let's, let's take the circuit board out also. Oh, I need that extension. Yes, I've been in the Midwest long enough that I now say, oh. I kind of forget that it's electric. Okay, if we can take the front panel off. And the back panel would come off if we removed the, the nuts around the ground screws and around those. I don't see a need to take those off just yet. But what I wanted to try and do was get you a good angle to see in there. In between the, so toroid, relay, capacitor, relay, programming chip. Those capacitors, usually you don't see this. Those capacitors are silver mica capacitors. Those are like the bee's knees when it comes to doing RF work. So we've got our tune button there and you can kind of see it light up and try, but there's nothing to tune. So it's, you know, not gonna work. Um, solid wires going through. This little thing right here is your SWR bridge. So from your transmitter, it runs through the toroid, which measures the SWR and then through the switching network and then back out through to the other one to your antenna. And this is probably called a Z817 because it is a Z-match antenna tuner. But I'm just taking a guess by taking a look at this thing. Oh look, it's the solder side, just in case you weren't really 100% familiar with how circuit boards work. But this is a really neat little tuner. I like the fact that the case is made of plastic and I like the fact that the case is rounded because it's easier on the hands for portable work. It's not sitting in my shack. And I have to kind of, you know, like physically interface with the thing more often than I would if it was a shack-based tuner. What I, what I don't know, and we'll have to figure this out as we go farther along in the video, is I would like for this thing to work without the batteries and just use the batteries that are built into the radio. So we're going to shoot those all across the room. I'm going to take these batteries out and we're going to plug it back in and see how well that works. And now there's no power. So I want to see if it will get power from the interface cable on the radio. So I'm going to get this thing put back just enough to give us the ability to get it on the radio. And then we will finish up from there. Not having those batteries isn't, I mean, having the batteries isn't a big deal, but they do add weight and they do require maintenance. And I'm already maintaining the battery that's inside the radio. So why do I want to maintain two different batteries, right? Right? I did not charge this battery upon opening the box. I opened the box right here with you guys. So this is the charge that it comes with from the factory and it's doing a pretty good job. We need to figure out how to interface this thing. It comes with an eight pin cable, which goes into the eight pin accessory port on the back of the radio. On the back of the radio, there's only two ports with some pins. There's this one with eight pins and then there's the one right next to it with six pins. The six pin one is for all of your audio accessories. On the back of the tuner, there is a computer and a radio interface. So what you can do is you can plug this in to the radio and then you can plug it in 
you can plug your computer in here and not lose the functionality of your accessory port. This will pass through every signal that needs to be passed through in both directions. And then when you push the tune button, the microprocessor in here will say, Pew! go out and, and tune this thing. So it will turn the rig into packet mode. It will turn the power down and it will initiate a carrier in order to get this thing enough juice flowing through it that it can measure it and tune it. So that's a pretty neat little thing. A lot of tuners don't have that pass through functionality. And as a result, that makes this tuner like the big item to have. This cable that it comes with is fairly long and I have cut it down and resoldered it and cleaned it up a bit so that it is, you know, just long enough to do the thing. So there we have it. Let's get over to the radio. Okay, as promised, we still have the lid off of the tuner. This is the radio interface cable, and then this is the cable that's going off to my DigiRig for audio, and then, well, for signal control processing, and then down here is where it plugs into the accessory port, and this other black cable, again, goes off to the DigiRig for doing FT8 work. This jumper lead here goes into the back of the radio to do RF from radio to tuner, and then this lead here goes out to my DX commander. We're all set as far as that goes. There is a video on the DigiRig and how to FT8 with this thing up in the corner up there for you. So the $5.87 question is, will this tune with powering from the radio? And the answer to that is no. Let's change modes over to packet and key down. And that will not do it either. Let's change our meter to SWR, and our SWR is flat, so that might be one reason. Let's change bands to a band that I'm going to need a tuner on, like 80 meters. And my SWR is still flat for some reason. And it shouldn't be, because I don't have 80 meters on this antenna. Aha, that was silly. I wasn't in, I was in CW mode. So let's do the CW key. So my SWR is pretty high, and my auto tuner didn't kick in. So we're stuck there. Let me get some batteries put back in this thing and we'll try it again. Okay, the batteries are back in. It's switched over to packet mode. You can hear the relays going. And now we have better SWR. So these, these little bars, there's a couple of threads out there on the internet somewhere asking what those bars are. They don't actually really have a meaning as far as like three bars is three to one or three bars is 1.3 to one. Just lower bars are better. And the tuner is there to protect you from all of that. So 1.2 bars, let's try it again. So there's three bars instead of four bars. I think it's doing the thing, I think that's fantastic. And we are good to go on the tuner. I'm gonna get this thing all screwed back together. Okay, sounds like I need to charge this screwdriver up, but like I said, that's the charge that it comes with from the factory, which is not a full charge. All right, so we've got it all back together again. One of my favorite things about this, this is like the tuner to get with this radio. There's, there's a lot of other choices, but this is the one that everybody gets. And as a result of that, there are accessories that work very well together. So this is the 3D printed protection rails, and this has loops built in so that I can attach my tuner to it. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna attach the tuner to it. This is just regular hook and loop fastener or Velcro, depending on what part of the country you are from. And it just holds it in there very nicely. Inside of the radio, the only thing that we need to do in order to get this tuner to work is we need to go into the deep F menu. So you long press the F key and we wanna switch this over. What number is it? Number 14, cat rate 38400. That is the cat rate that this expects to see. And then if this is set to 384 and this is set to 384 and you plug a computer into the back, you gotta set the computer to 384. That's all it takes to get this thing to work. I have another one of these Z817 tuners that I got from RNL Electronics. And I got it for $25 because it was broken. So there will be a video on the channel coming up about attempting to repair that, figuring out what's wrong with it, exploring the internals. We might not be able to get it to work, but who knows? Maybe I'll take the Z100 and stick that inside the Z18 case 
to make it lovely like I like this little plastic case that this thing comes in. There's a bunch of links in the description down below if you want one of these Z817 tuners or the 3D printed rails or the Kyrie screwdriver sets that I talked about in the video. Otherwise, there's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.